it's been a couple of weeks since we've had an opportunity to pander to two and on, but we are back because Sunday Night Football features the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling into Miami. They are seven point underdogs. The two and four Steelers will tr- take on the three and three Dolphins. Mitch Trubisky reinserted as starter after Kenny Pickett was injured in the previous game. Tua Tunga Vailoa potentially back, seemingly back. And it seems like the Dolphins just couldn't escape the injury bug at the quarterback position, but thankfully, their week one starter is finally healthy and off of the men. And we're all happy to see it. Obviously, Tua, that big hit kind of like shook us all, shook the football world as we re-entered the conversation about concussions. But he's healthy. He's safe. He's back. Hopefully, he continues to be such. It's a violent game. Sometimes you just can't avoid it. That's the sucky thing about talking about this game. But Tua, hoping that you continue where you left off because where he left off, We were talking about the Dolphins as a legitimate contender in the AFC. They had really started to turn things around. Uh, Tua had that six-touchdown performance earlier in the year against the Ravens and was really looking sharp. Now he's back. So how does that change things for the Dolphins? Do you think they could just pick up right where they left off? I mean, I know it's small sample size, and obviously small sample size always take it with a grain of salt. And at the same time, there's a pretty distinct comparison of what the Dolphins offense looks like with Tua versus what it looks like with Teddy Bridgewater and Skylar Thompson, right? Like Skylar Thompson, of course, that makes sense. Nobody knew who Skylar Thompson was except a small pocket of Tua and on that really fell behind Skylar Thompson in the preseason. They they really liked watching Skylar Thompson in the preseason, and but everyone else didn't really know who he was, so... You're, you're sitting with that and Teddy and I mean, Tua coming back changes everything for the Dolphins, because I think if Teddy's starting that game, like they're only like a three point favorite, maybe like Tua swings that game in a huge direction for the Dolphins. And I think that means that Tua might be slightly more than a game manager. Tua might be a slightly better version of, I mean, people are saying he was Jimmy Garoppolo coming into the year. And I kept saying, we don't know what he is, but we know what he isn't. We know he's not Justin Herbert, but we don't know exactly what he is. I think this is a sign that with a larger sample size and offensive line, those weapons like Tua might be something nice, or at least a team that he leads a team that with talented players can go uh, play Pittsburgh and have it be a game where they kind of like aren't feeling scared to lose which like last 20 years when have you said that the dolphins play the steelers and the dolphins are feeling confident in their abilities you know it's funny we look at what the chiefs are doing and the chiefs still have a very good offense obviously one of the best in the league but tyreek hill has still been amazing in miami despite having to play with as you mentioned teddy bridgewater and skylar thompson the last couple weeks With Tua, we were really seeing something special with Tyreek and Jalen Waddle and what they were doing in the passing game. I think the biggest difference for me, especially to go back to the game against Baltimore, is that we saw that when push comes to shove, Tua can start to sling the ball. That Mike McDaniel will develop the offense in a way that will allow Tua to sling the ball around, which is something that under the previous administration, Tua never had the opportunity to do. Speaking of the previous administration, Brian Flores, revenge game, Tua, is that narrative developing? Brian Flores is on that staff, and you better bet that Tua wants to uh, stick it to Brian Flores, who actively chose Ryan Fitzpatrick over him, actively chose Ryan Fitzpatrick over Tua because and had three different offensive coordinators in two years. And Brian Flores is a really great defensive coach, just okay. not there. Okay, but in fairness, in fairness to Brian Flores. After seeing that one video of Ryan Fitzpatrick no-shirting it in Buffalo, New York on a cold (laughs) day, I would go with that man into battle any day myself. Talked about it for years, man. The the beauty of Fitz magic, the magic will bring you back into games that you'd never thought imaginable and you will lose games you never thought you could lose because that's what Fitz magic is. It takes some and it gives some. That's that's the beauty (laughs) of Fitz magic. Not that motherfucker, according to Brady. Nope, it's not. It's not him. We know it's Derek Carr at this point. But basically, I was interested in that aspect of it because, look, I declared two weeks ago, Pittsburgh season is over. Like, like Pittsburgh's not going to make the playoffs. They're not playing for anything at this point. They I said they had a stretch where they played, I believe, Buffalo, Tampa, Miami, and uh, I forgot who they play next week. It's it's another team that's way above 500. Uh, And basically, I looked at that and I'm like, Pittsburgh's going to walk out of that two and six 
by the time they get to two and six, the season's going to be virtually over. They did get the win against Tampa. So that's the one out of the one and three I said in there. So I, I guess I'm betting on the Dolphins to uh, to win this football game. And uh, I guess I'm going to stick to my guns on the Steelers are going to be two and six at the end of this stretch. But I mean, now Kenny Pickett's hurt. So it's, it's Mitch Trubisky again. It's the same boring offense where Deontay Johnson has zero touchdowns this season. And Najee Harris has fantasy owners like pulling their hair out because they're in last place if you drafted Najee Harris in the first round. And yeah, all that stuff that's happening with Pittsburgh is there. But Pittsburgh's defense, I mean, the the thing that keeps them in games is that the the same thing we talk about with Belichick, like Mike Tomlin's ability to scheme defenses is something that, you know, they're taking less. I mean, Pittsburgh has a good defense. Like, it's not like the Patriots where they just have no names and they're turning them into a top 10 defense the last two years. But Pittsburgh has guys. They're just overperforming expectations because of, uh, I assume, what Mike Tomlin is able to do scheming uh, to keep the Buccaneers to 18 points. I know Tampa doesn't have the greatest offense this year, but 18 points against Tampa. <laughs> they won a game by forcing four turnovers of Joe Burrow. And uh, they are kind of a team that like they can't move the ball on offense. And they, I guess Mike Tomlin can keep them in games with the defensive scheming. Yeah, I, I think it's important with the upset of Tampa last week to not lose sight of what the offense was the previous five weeks under Mitch Trubisky while he was in charge of that team. And yeah, he was making some clutch throws. He was hitting Chase Claypool. He was slinging it around a little bit. But I, I feel like that's just sometimes when game planning breaks down and the backup quarterback could catch someone by surprise. Now that the Dolphins have a week to literally plan around Mitch Trubisky, they can go back to watching the tape of Mitch Trubisky through the first four weeks of the <laughs> NFL season where he was doing nada, zilch, nothing to help Every, this every now and again, Mitch Trubisky has a fuck it Cooper Cups down there somewhere play. And they, I think he had two of them against the Bucks, but he had one against the uh, Bengals in overtime that won that game. And he had the one this last week against, uh, or I think he had two against Tampa where he's just like, eh, just someone's down there. Let's just throw it. Todd Bowles doesn't give you many opportunities, but you, if you take advantage of the opportunities he gives you, they can often change the course of a game. You talk about the Cooper Cup play in last year's playoff, and that's exactly what we saw with the Steelers and Bucks result. Uh, when it comes to the Dolphins side of things, like I said, their ability to be able to game plan around the fact you have Mitch coming back in, uh, potentially, Pickett could still always come back. There's not going to rule it out I'm recording this very early in the week, but assuming Mitch Trubisky's back out there, they won't send him out to the Wolves. Figure that it's probably going to be a little bit of a training wheels week for Tua being reinserted back in the lineup. I don't expect it to go back to business as usual coming off a couple week absence, especially we're talking about a cognitive injury when we talk about a head injury as he suffered. So it might be a little bit of a malaise, you know, just associated with those type of injuries. So we'll see how sharp he comes into this game. It's probably going to take him like a week or two to get readjusted in this offense. So going against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, that's not going to be easy. I don't think that this is going to be a blowout as the line is suggesting a seven point line. I think this is going to be a lot closer than we really think. I will still take the Miami Dolphins to win outright, but I don't hate the Steelers with the points. There's, there's something that's just telling me again, slow start for Tua coming off the injury. Pittsburgh's defense is still tough. Limited offense with Trubisky. Low scoring game, but a game that the Dolphins should win and advance to four and three with. Yeah, but I agree with yeah. you. The 20, 20 to 17 type of game. And if you're looking for a fun prop bet, Jalen Waddle touchdown, I would bet on that one. All right, guys. Well, let us know below in the comment section. Are you riding with the Steelers? Are you riding with the Dolphins? We would like to hear your thoughts on this game. We would like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on social medias. From Kyle Ledbetter and Juju, stay safe, happy, and healthy. We'll see you on the next one.